Okay, my wonderful, wonderful students. So what we're going to do today uh, is we're going to move on to lesson 2-9. And with this lesson, we are going to be solving equations using the graphing calculator. Okay, now, you're going to hate me at the end of this when you say, why didn't you tell me this earlier? But if I had told you this earlier, then you wouldn't have solved them the real way, okay? Because you can't rely on the calculator to do everything, right? So you won't always have the graphing calculator. Uh, but if you have it, there are times when you can use it to your advantage. That's what we're going to do today, okay? So look at your handout uh, for Lesson 2-9. Um, we are going to take equations such as 3x plus 5 equals 8, and we are going to solve it on the graphing calculator. And I'm going to talk you through the steps here listed for the procedure, okay? So uh, you need to do this with me along with your calculator, and if you need to stop and rewind, then you know feel free to do so. Let me pull up my calculator, turn it on. All right, so now with the calculator, there's always a lot of issues. It's, you know, people get error messages and lots because they don't know how to troubleshoot, uh, you know, the problems that come uh, when graphing on the graphing calculator. So I'll try to mention a few of those today. Um, but as you practice more home with your graphing calculator, then now you won't run into those issues as much. But I'll try to, again, point out some uh, common problems that happen with the, with the calculator, all right? But first, anytime, um, you know, you want to graph something, uh, you always go to this Y equals screen right here. So I'm going to hit Y equals, and notice at the top, where it says plot one, plot two, and plot three. Those are not highlighted. They should not be highlighted, okay? This is what I mean by highlighted, and do not do this. But if I were to go up and enter and come back down, notice that plot one is highlighted. If one of those plots looks like that, you need to unhighlight it because that will give you an error message when you go to graph, okay? And to do that, you just arrow up, enter, arrow down, okay? So that'll take care of that. But hopefully your screen looks like mine. If there is anything typed in under Y1, Y2, Y3, then just clear it out. Just go down, you know, to where something was and just hit clear. Okay, and it'll go away. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to take uh, each side of the equation and we're going to type it in uh, for y1 and y2. Okay, so I'm going to type 3x plus 5 where y1 is because that's the left-hand side of my equation. Okay, so right here where it says 3x plus 5, Okay. or right here more using the equation, you type the left-hand side of the equation in to uh, y1. So I'm going to do uh, 3. Now you're probably wondering where x is. x is right beside the green alpha key. It says x key theta in. Um, obviously, we're, when we hit it, it's going to hit x. So it can be used for other symbols, but we're not going to do that in math 1. Okay, so three, and you, every time you hit that, you'll get your variable x. Okay. So 3x plus 5. All right, now, you can go ahead and hit graph at this point if you want. Um, it won't give us the answer yet. But just so you can, you can see what's happening, um, when I graph it, you'll notice I get a diagonal line, and I've kind of simulated that over here on your paper. Okay. If you do not get a graph that looks like mine, and by the way, my graph goes from negative 10 on the left to positive 10 on the right, and the same down and up, negative 10 to positive 10. If yours looks odd, like the scale is off, then to troubleshoot that, you would hit zoom, six, standard. That will always take you back to the standard viewing graphing screen, which goes from negative 10 to positive 10. Okay? Uh, so that's one thing that you could see if uh, that helps, if your graphing doesn't look like mine. All right, so I'm going to go back to y equals, and now I'm going to go down to y2, and I'm going to type in the right-hand side of the equation, which in this case is just 8. Okay, hit graph again, and now you see I get another line. So the left-hand side of the equation gives me a line. The right-hand side of the equation gives me a line. Guess what the answer is? The answer is the point of intersection, all right? So my answer um, would be right here, okay, where the two intersect. But you, since it's on a coordinate grid, they intersect at um, an ordered pair, right? Every point on a grid is a is an x y is a coordinate. Okay, so this point right here is an x y value. Okay, now 
my scale's a little messed up on the picture that I've given you in your notes. But if you look on your calculator and you count, uh, you go over 1 and you go up 8. Look at your calculator. My scale, again, is off here. And the intersection point is at 1, 8. Now, you may say, well, I don't understand. But why do I have two answers? You don't have two answers. X is the answer you're looking for. Okay, you're looking for the first number of your ordered pair. So X is equal to 1. Okay, so you'll notice that if I go back to the uh, equation and I put 1 where X is, I have 3 times 1 plus 5 because you just told me that X should be 1, and you notice that that does equal 8. The Y coordinate is always what the it equals when you put that X value in. Okay, so you see that the Y coordinate tells us uh, the output, okay, uh, given your input. Output given X as the input. Okay, and we're going to talk more about input, output, functions, and all that kind of stuff a little later. But just kind of using the right uh, terms of vocabulary, you're looking for the X value, which is the input, and the Y value of the ordered pair, which is not your answer. But just so you know what it represents, it represents the output or uh, what the equation would equal if you put that X value into the equation. Okay? Now, there's a way to do this on the calculator um, without just trying to guesstimate. Oh, that says, now I'm going to make your risk work out pretty good today where, you know, I can obviously look at this and go, I'll go over 1, up 8, I believe, you know, it intersects at 1. But there is a way that if you aren't sure, your calculator will give you, will actually tell you the answer. I mean, to be quite blunt about it. And I've got the directions right here on your handout. It goes like this. We're going to go to, okay, we are going to go to second count. So, like, second is right here. So, you're going to hit second. And above trace, it says count in yellow. That's what you want, second count. And the calculator is saying, all right, what would you like me to calculate from the graph? Well, I want it to calculate where they intersect, which is at number five. So I'm going to just scroll down to number five where it says intersects, and I'm going to enter. Now, it's going to ask you a couple of questions here, and it's going to talk about curves. Don't worry about that, okay? Uh, that's just because, you know, they, the calculator can't say first line, first curve, first first ellipse, first quadrat. I mean, you know, so it just uses the term curve in general terms, all right? We know we have lines and not a curve, so it's okay, all right? So uh, when you when it asks you these questions, you're going to get a turtle that's blinking, and it will always be blinking where the line crosses the y-axis, okay? And you notice that it is sitting on the first line that you type in, which is at the top left of your graph and calculator screen. It will always be right, okay? So just enter, but it's, it's just confirming. It says, am I sitting on the first curve or first line? And it is sitting on the first line, okay? It's on my diagonal line, so I'm going to enter for, to confirm yes. Then it, it, you'll notice the turtle moves up to the second line, and it'll be sitting where it, the second line hits the y-axis. And it's asking me to confirm, am I sitting on the second line or second curve? Yes, so I'm going to confirm by hitting enter. And then it says, well, would you like me to guess where they intersect? Well, yeah, I do want you to guess where they intersect, so I'm going to enter. And you'll notice now at the bottom of the screen, it says the intersection point is 1, 8. And we've already decided that the X value is the answer we are looking for. Okay? All right. It's easy as that, right? No problem. All right. Now, uh, let's do some together. Let's practice. All right? So let's look at number one on your handout. Get your calculator. Go back to Y equals. And where you have stuff typed in already from what we talked about, just clear it out. All right, now I'm going to type in the left-hand side of my equation, which is negative 4x minus 7. And I'm going to go down now to y sub 2, and I'm going to type in the right-hand side of my equation, which is 1. Okay, come back. There we go. And I am now going to hit graph, and I should see something similar. Okay, two lines that intersect. And I need to know that point of intersection. It looks to me, if I were to guess, that I go left 2, up 1. So my guess would be negative 2. 
right? But let's go through the process and have the calculator actually confirm that, right? So again, same steps. Second, count. Go down to number five, intersect. Here goes my question. Am I sitting on the first curve? There's my little turtle. Yes, enter. Am I sitting on the second curve? Oh, she moved. She's on the right one now. Enter. Do I want it to guess the intersection? Yes. So I enter, and it tells me the intersection is at negative 2, 1. Uh, so that tells me that when I look at my equation then, okay, x is equal to negative 2. And you can verify that. Just take this, do negative 4 times your x value, which is negative 2, subtract 7, and that gives me 8 minus 7, which is 1, okay? Which is why the ordered pair was negative 2, comma, 1, right? So, easy, 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 okay? Um, let's look at number 2. Perhaps a little faster, maybe, right? Y equals, clear out what you have. Oops, here, here. And then we're going to type in, on the left, I'm going to type in 1 half. Notice how I did that. Let me throw that out there again. Parentheses. You must, fractions must be in parentheses. Let me say that again. Fractions must be in parentheses. Okay? Otherwise, it thinks that you're dividing by 2n, but you're not. All right? You're, you're multiplying by 1 half. So, parentheses. 1. Your fraction bar is your division. So, 1 divided by 2, which is 1 half. Close your parentheses. That is essential. Now, it says N. You may say, where's N? Don't worry about what letter I have on the paper. We're always going to use X on the calculator. We don't need to type in all the different letters on the calculator. That's ridiculous. Okay, we always are going to use X. So, when I have X plus 7, that's the left-hand side of our equation. Go down. Now, I'm going to type in 3 for the right-hand side, and that's the second equation. Graph. They intersect. I can take a guess that they intersect around here, around negative 8, negative 9, maybe. Let's go to second count. Please tell me where they intersect. And there's my turtle. She's on the first one. She's on the second one, and I want her to guess. And negative 8, 3. So my x value here, or n value, if you look at the equation, is negative 8. Okay. So that tells me that if I were to do 1 half, times negative 8 and then add 7, I should get 3. 1 half of negative 8 is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 7 is 3, so we are correct. Okay? All right. Let's go to number 3. All right. Pull up a calculator, go to y equals, clear out what I have typed in, and let's start over. All right. Left-hand side, I have 6 parentheses, y minus 2, I type that in as x minus 2, so variable is irrelevant that's on the piece of paper. You always use your x button, okay? Y, the right-hand side is negative 6. Make sure you use a negative and not a minus sign. Your calculator will give you an error message if you do minus 6 because it thinks you're trying to subtract 6 from something and there's nothing in front of it, okay? So in this case, you have to do the negative sign, negative 6. Okay, graph. And they intersect, if I were to think of this as an ordered pair, it would be maybe right 1 down 6 or 7, so 1, negative 6 or something like that. Uh, I'm going to go second count, intersect, first curve. Now you may say, where's my turtle? Oh, she's there. So remember, she always pops up on the where the diagonal line crosses the y-axis, and you can't see that because that's down below my graph, okay? Because my graph keeps going, you just can't see it all. So she's there, so I'm just going to enter. Now I can see her where because she's on the second curve because that is on my viewing screen, okay? Enter again, and now do I want it to guess? And I do, and it tells me the intersection is at 1, negative 6, with 1 being the answer that we are looking for, okay? Cool. Uh, let's do a couple more. So look at your paper, and let's go to example four. Okay. On your calculator, clear out what you had under y equals, and let's type this in. What did we just talk about, fractions? Yes, we said you always have to put them in parentheses, essential. So two-thirds x plus four goes on the, or goes under y sub one, and under y sub two. I'm going to type in 6, 
and I'm going to hit graph and I'm going to get two lines that intersect. They intersect right here. Okay, so to find that ordered pair, sextet count, intersect. Am I sitting on the first curve? Yes. I'm sitting on the second curve? Yes. Do I want you to guess? Yes. And intersect at 3, 6. So 3 is our answer. Okay, so x equals 3. All right. Now, number 5. Here we go. Go back to y equals. Clear out what you had. Good afternoon. Will the following students please report to Ms. Miller's class? So I'm typing in three parentheses. Olivia Burns and Myra Lewis. And will the following students please come to the front office? Anna Foley, Shana Brown, Catherine Creel, Gabrielle Pagliari, Matthew Chang, and Madeline Sharkey. Okay. So the left-hand side, uh, all this stuff over here, the 3 times parentheses 2 L minus 1 plus 5, type that in exactly as you see it. Of course, we're using X for M. And on the right-hand side is negative 4, so I put that under Y sub 2. I'm going to hit graph. And I'm going to have two lines that intersect. And again, I can guesstimate where they intersect, but I'm going to let the calculator do the work for me. And see what it tells me. Enter, enter, enter. And it intersects at negative 1. Okay? Remember the x value is your answer. Okay? Another one. Number 6. I think you're getting the hang of this, right? All right. Here we go. Y equals clear. Clear. Y1 is negative. Make sure you do a negative, not a minus. Negative 8x plus 14 and on the right hand side is negative 2. Graph. Okay. And I'm going to find the point of intersection. First curve. So again, my turtle's off the screen because it crosses the y axis way up here at the top. So she's sitting there. All right, so I'm just going to enter. There she is on my second one because that's on my viewing screen. And I want her to guess. And she tells me 2, negative 2, with positive 2 being my answer. Okay. All right. Pretty easy. It does get a little harder. So let's look at number uh, 7. Okay. Back to y equals. Clear out what we had. And here we go. Parentheses. 1 divided by 3, close parentheses. That's 1 third. X minus 5 plus parentheses, 5 thirds in parentheses, x. Now, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and combine those like terms yourself and type it in after that. But the calculator will do that for me, so, you know, why don't we just let it? Okay, go down to uh, the next equation, y sub 2, and I'm going to type in 3, since that's what it is equal to, the right-hand side. All right, graph. There's the first line, the left-hand side, there's the second. Have you noticed that every time we just type in a number, we get a flat line? Yeah, there's a reason for that. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So anyway, let's find out where they intersect. Second count, five, enter, 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 and we get four as our answer. Okay? All right. Now. Number eight, things are going to start getting a little tricky as we go through these, okay? So watch carefully. Go back to y equals, clear out what you have, and let's start over. Now the left-hand side is equal to um, m plus 11, so we're going to put x plus 11. And the right-hand side is equal to 2m plus 4, so we're going to type 2x plus 4. Now, you're not going to get a flat line this time because you'll notice the right-hand side is not just equal a number. We actually have an expression just like we have on the left-hand side. So what we're going to get here are two diagonal lines, okay? And let's see if they intersect. Now, they do intersect, okay? Uh, we just can't see where they intersect, okay? So, uh, what we're going to have to do is, um, well, we'll see if it'll do our calculator. It may not. Let's see. Second count intersect 
I mean, obviously they intersect. They're not parallel, right? Now, I, I guess she's sitting up there on my first curve. I can't see her, but I'm going to enter. There she is on my second one, right, my second line. And well, she does tell me the intersection. It's at 718. That's why you can't see the, where these two lines intersect because they intersect way up here at 18, and my graph only goes to 10, right? Okay. So those were two diagonal lines that did intersect, um, and the x value there would be 7. Okay. Moving right along. Number 9. These last two are tricky. Stay with me. There we go. Number nine. 4x minus 8 goes under my first equation. And the y sub 2 is going to be the right-hand side, which is 2 parentheses, 2x minus 4, close parentheses. Ooh, but I didn't do that right. So that's what I'm going to do. See, I have a star here. I typed, <laughs> I typed in a time instead of an x. Silly me. Let me scroll back. And I can just type over that. There we go. 2x minus 4. All right, graph. There's my first line. And, oh, what? What? It only graphed one line. Why do you think it only graphed one line? Let's think about that. I put in two equations. It should have graphed two lines. Watch. If I were to simplify the left hand or the right hand side, I'm going to get 4x minus 8. So I have 4x minus 8 equals 4x minus 8. If you were to solve that by subtracting 4x's from both sides, you're going to get negative 8 equals negative 8. What type of answers did we get when we solved equations and you ended up with a true statement? Yeah, we ended up with infinite solutions. Okay? So let's think about what, this, what we've been trying to do this entire lesson. We've been trying to find out where all these lines intersected, and the intersection point was our answer. Well, what your calculator just proved to you, just showed you, it showed you that this line is the exact same line as this one. Because look, they are equal. They're equivalent expressions. They're just written in different forms. But they're equivalent expressions. So it actually graphed the same line on top of the original line. Well, how many times would they intersect? If I graph a line and then I draw, I graph another line right on top of it, how many intersection points are you going to have? Infinite intersection points. That's why the answer is infinite. That is so cool, right? Very cool. All right. I bet you know what number 10 is going to be then. But I wonder if you know what the graph is going to look like. All right, so let's go to number 10 and clear this out. And I'm going to type in negative 2x minus 1. And then on the right side, where y sub 2 is here, we'll type in 4 minus, oop, not, nah, ooh, goodness, Felix just messed up. I hit 4 negative. No, 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 no. 4 minus 2y or 2x. There we go. All right. Good afternoon. Will the following students please come to the front office at dismissal? Let me call Lisa here. Moore and Sammy Kinnaman. Okay, pick it up here after an S. So, uh, look at your graph now. I've got parallel lines. So, where do they intersect? Guess what? They don't intersect. They're parallel. Well, if they're parallel and they don't intersect, and that's what I'm looking for, the point of intersection, what do you think your answer would be? Exactly. No solution. There is no point of intersection. Okay, if, they, if they're parallel, they don't intersect, there's not going to be a solution because that's what you're looking for is that intersection point. So um, if you look at your notes, there are three questions to the right. Uh, the first one says, what does the graph look like when there is one solution to an equation? So if you go look in, at all examples one through eight, look at the examples one through eight, what's the same about all those examples? What you had were two lines that intersected. You may want to draw a picture there on your notes, okay? What you had there were intersecting lines. Anytime the two lines intersect, then you are going to have one solution. Okay? Because that's going to be um, an ordered pair. So, of course, you're looking for the x value. Okay? Now, what does the graph look like when there's no solution? We'll look at number 10. Number 10 was no solution. What did that graph look like? It was parallel lines. Okay, again, you may want to draw you a picture 
there in your notes, lines are parallel. There is no intersection point. Therefore, there is no solution. Oops, I didn't spell that right. Intersection. Okay. And what does the graph look like when there are infinite solutions? So go look at number nine. What happened there? Okay. We had a line graphed on top of another line. Oops, there we go. Okay. So what we had was infinite solutions because they intersected everywhere. Right, so you may want to say that we had the same lines, okay? So they intersect everywhere, okay? All right, now what you're going to do is you're going to practice uh, using your graphing calculator with the eight problems on the back, and I want you to sketch the graphs. I've given you a little graph there to sketch it um, to kind of help you out, but you should be able to go through the steps on your calculator to write down your answer, okay? All right, have a great day. And even better tomorrow.